Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zev from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come down to see friend and talented craftsman Mick Rand. Mick, how are you doing? I'm good Zed, thanks very much for coming along today. It's an today. absolute pleasure to be here. So this video is a third video in a three-part series I am filming with Mick. In the first video, what we looked at was a selection of cooksers and bowls uh, that Mick has carved by hand. In the second video, we looked at a cookser vice and tools that he uses to carve the cookers and bowls with. In his third video, what we're looking at is Mick's personal process for using a branding iron to mark a maker's mark on woodenware that he's carved. Now, this is not so much a tutorial, this is more of an insight into how Mick approaches this process. The other videos that we recorded in this series, I'll put links down to below. We're filming here at his allotment here in London. I do apologise in advance if you do hear a wind on the mic. It's a very, very blustery day today. <laughs> but that being said, what we're going to do in this video is something I'm looking forward to seeing because I've not seen it in its entirety, is Mick's process for the Maker's Mark. What I'm also going to do is put links below to Mick's Instagram where you can connect with him and also ask him any questions. And I will put a link below to his website. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video where Mick Rand is going to be showing you how to use a branding iron to put a Maker's Mark on woodenware. Well, what we've got here said is the, um, a branding iron which I had made up years ago, long before I used to make bowls and cooksers, I used to do things like stick furniture and repair of garden tools. I looked, like to put my own brand on them and this is it. Uh, I did a piece of artwork uh, as a Word document and sent it off to a guy in Sheffield. Uh, I can't remember his details now, it was yonks ago. And he, he made this up using some amazing piece of machinery um, what it is is HWP which is my brand slightly pretentious name Highgate Wood Products um, when I first got it, it had a long long handle on like a poker um, so I've chopped that off and put this wooden one on gradually of course it gets more and more scorched the idea being you can hold the brand in one hand without risky burning yourself and the workpiece in the other. And what we'll do next is heat this thing up and then I'll show you the branding process last. So Mick, obviously we're now looking at the heating up of the branding iron itself. So what do you personally do then? Well, it's quite simple. What we've got here today, Zed, is um, luckily we've already got the stove going because that's what we're making our tea and stuff on. And yeah, it's just simply a question of putting the uh, business end of the branding iron into the flames and then allowing it time to heat up. And I'll do that now. The only thing is because I've, oh, sorry, because I've altered this handle here, I try and keep that somewhat out of the heat starting to scorch a little bit already which doesn't matter because if it, the whole thing catches fire I'll just put a new one on so you just put it in there and you'll poke the business end as I say into your flames into your embers and then yeah give it five or ten minutes to heat up it's not all that precise as science you just have to see if it's ready by testing it which we'll do first on a scrap piece of wood So Mick, with a branding iron pretty much ready, what are we going to do next? Well, what I'll do is, I want the brand to look as close to that as possible. That's quite a good one. So, I'll get the, the iron out of the fire, to coin a phrase, and I'll test it on this scrap piece here. Partly do that to, to cool it down a wee bit. And then I'll try on the bottom of this bowl that I made, where I have actually that shaved off the bottom surface to remove the oil in the hope that we don't get burnt oil around the brand which can makes it look kind of cloudy so I hope this thing is warmed up enough so that's been here for about five ten minutes five or ten minutes yeah it doesn't take much um, 
And first I'll do the test piece. The main thing is to make sure you've got it upright, the, the right way up. So there. I think we might just about get away with it. And then on here. Now it's not quite as hot as it might have been, so I can hold it on there for longer. And there we have it, with a corner missing, which I don't mind, the basic HWP brand, which is the maker's mark that I use um, on the stuff that I make. So when you're placing that onto the, the piece of wood, so you're, you're gently rocking it in, is that what you're doing? Yes, yeah, that, that's uh, how you do it. And I'm just gonna see if I can get a touch on that corner there. Yep, that's done it. Uh, I know it looks like a sort of double transfer, but I've just burnt that tiny bit in on that corner. And then what I'll do in this area where there is still traces of burnt oil, I'll just shave off the minutest shaving off that to make a more distinct edge between the burnt wood and the unburnt wood. So would I be right in saying once this is cooled down and dried up, you would then potentially clean it up with a knife? Yes, I, I will try giving that a little tiny trim uh, with a knife. Even though these burns look like they've gone in quite deep, um, you can only take the merest shaving off there to, as I say, try and en enhance the contrast between the burnt area and the unburnt area. Um, I'll have a quick look at that, but I'm actually quite happy with that. I don't mind if the brand looks rough. As long as people can see HWP, which is Highgate Wood Products, uh, as I say, my slightly pretentious name for my stuff, um, that's good enough. That will do. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Mick, thank you so much. Thank you indeed, Ted. It's been great filming with you today. So as mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is more of just an insight. So it's not necessarily a tutorial. It's something I've not covered before on my channel, let alone actually see the entire process from start to finish. So something to kind of stress that this is just mixed way of doing it this is not the only way <laughs> right you know there are a myriad of ways out there um and what i'd be right in saying that the brand and nine you purchased some time ago didn't you uh yes in, in fact it's slightly unfortunate there because i can't remember any details of the guy who made it I, except i remember and this is about 20 years ago he, he was based in sheffield and i'm not quite sure um of his details anymore. It was almost pre-internet. And there's a lot of makers I've seen, especially on Etsy, that can make a maker's mark like this. So it's you know, important that you look around depending on the location that you're in um, and even ask other makers to, to see where they got them from. But Etsy is a great place to start in terms of making a custom branding iron uh, for your maker's mark or whatever it is that you want to mark your wooden wear with. Um, so Mick, like I said, I do thank you for allowing me to document this. Um, your process so that others can see how you approach this topic. So a final reminder, we've done two previous videos in this three-part series that I'm filming today with Mick. The first video was having a look at his selection of hand-carved cookers and bowls. The second video was having a look at his cooks of vice and tools that he use, uses to carve the cookers and bowls too. And obviously in the third video we looked at the actual branding iron uh, that he, he does his maker's mark with on his wooden wear. Links to all of those videos down below in the description. Also a link to Mick's Instagram. It's a great way of seeing the myriad of things that he gets up to, as well as if you want to message him, that's a perfect place to do it. And also finally, a link to his website where he sells his wares. And obviously you can have a look at that. If you're getting any value from his video whatsoever, it will mean the world to me. You head over to his Instagram and give him a follow. So Mick, a sincere thank you once again for allowing me into your space for the day to document. Um, these yep. videos. Uh, guys, as always, I really hope you enjoy this video and as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. But myself, Zed Outdoors and Mick Rand, peace out.